Welcome back. What I want to do in this video is is get to know um, the components of the electron transport chain. And a lot of times what you'll hear me um, refer to it as is the respiratory chain. And that's another name for it. And in this particular video, what I want to talk about is the first enzyme, or, or really, it, it's not necessarily the first enzyme, but it's um, usually the first enzyme that's talked about, and that's NADH. ubiquinone oxidoreductase and there's also a shorter name for it um, and that's NADH dehydrogenase and what I'm showing here is I've got basically what I have here is I have a reduced molecule right there and then I have a um, I have a an oxidized molecule right here and so the colon between them and of, and of course the oxidoreductase that that's the nomenclature for specifying the oxidoreductase what it means is that these two molecules are basically going to undergo a redox reaction and so NADH is going to be oxidized and ubiquinone is going to be reduced okay so having said that Let's actually go into um, let's go into the actual mechanism of how this particular molecule works. Okay, so what's going to happen is, you know, through we have glycolysis, right? Glycolysis, we have the TCA cycle, right? There's amino acid oxidation there's beta oxidation right and all of these things have in common they have something in common there they, they they increase the concentration of NADH okay so they're increasing the concentration of NADH all right so what's going to happen is the NADH the NADH that is produced it's going to end up in the mitochondria so the NADH is going to be transported actually let me make the shorter arrow the NADH is going to be transported into the mitochondrial matrix okay and essentially the NADH is going to be is going to be oxidized by the first enzyme in in the respiratory chain and that's NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase okay now what I want to say is that this whole video is on NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase but what I want to be perfectly clear about with this enzyme is that it contains multiple prosthetic groups and what I'm going to show you in this video is I'm going to show you um, the, at least the, the sequential pathway of how the electrons flow. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to show you, first of all, that we're going to start with NADH, right? We're going to start with NADH, and NADH is going to first transfer its electrons, and I'll also mention real quick that there's also an NADH plus H plus, and it's going to get oxidized ultimately to NAD plus, right? And ultimately what's going to happen, ultimately what's going to happen is it's going to be transferred ultimately to an aflavin mononucleotide. So the way we usually designate this is we're going to start with an oxidized flavin mononucleotide, and that's usually how we designate it, and we're going to end up ultimately with a reduced flavin mononucleotide, and that's usually the way that we designate it like that. Okay, so let me come down here and actually show you what flavin mononucleotide looks like. So flavin mononucleotide is actually a it's actually very similar to FAD, and that's the reason that 
or it, uh, that's because um, in the biosynth and we'll actually look at the biosynthesis later, but in the biosynthesis of in the biosynthesis of um, FAD, the actual and actually let me just go ahead and write it right here. Flavin mononucleotide actually gets converted to FAD, and the the enzyme that does it is called FAD synthetase. And actually, what ends up happening is, is you actually burn an ATP, and you end up getting out an ADP. So, it, or actually, let me actually no, you don't get out an ADP. Um, you get out. Uh, excuse me, a pyrophosphate. So what you end up transferring is an, an, an AMP group. So there's actually two names for this enzyme. It's actually FAD synthetase, or the other name for it is FMN adenylyl transferase because it's transferring an AMP or an adenylyl group. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish drawing FMN, flavin mononucleotide, And it's basically, this is basically the, um, what I'm drawing is the oxidized form. And what I'm drawing right now is I'm drawing the ribotyl group. This is the ribotyl group. The ribotyl group. Okay. And what you're going to find what you're going to find with respect to the FMN and the F, or excuse me, what you're going to find with respect to FMN is that it's, like I mentioned, it's basically FAD without the AMP group. What you'd find is if I, it is, if I drew FAD, what you would find is that there would have been an extra AMP group on there. So what you would, would have had is you would have had an extra phosphate here with an adenosine. That's what you would have had. So notice that I didn't have that, and this is basically the oxidized form of FAD. This is the oxidized form of, or excuse me, FMN. This is the oxidized form of FMN. And actually, let me go ahead and also draw the reduced form. And, and actually, what I'll go ahead and do is I'll just draw the ring up here. And the reduced form, and I'll show you where the electrons actually go. I'll just put the generic R right there. And there's a double bond right there. And this is right here the this is the reduced form. So essentially what's happening is I'll do this in a different color. The NADH, the NADH is going to transfer its electrons from there to here. And of course, in the process, it spits off an NAD+. So initially, and again, this is all NADH dehydrogenase, but the initial electron acceptor is flavin mononucleotide. Okay, and then of course, flavin mononucleotide gets reduced. Okay. Now the next thing that's going to happen is that we're going to transfer the um, we're going to transfer the electrons that we got from flavin mononucleotide to iron sulfur centers. And the thing about the iron sulfur centers, and you're going to find that this is true not only in this enzyme but other enzymes in the respiratory chain, is that the the the, the transfer to iron sulfur centers. We usually abbreviate it FES, and of course this is the oxidized version. And the transfer of electrons to the iron sulfur centers occurs many times because there are actually many iron sulfur centers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw just a few of these. So, so here's an iron, and actually here's an iron sulfur center. Iron sulfur center oxidized, and this becomes iron sulfur center reduced and this process is going to happen many times it's going to happen many times because there are a lot of iron sulfur centers so essentially what you have is is this the iron that's in the iron sulfur center 
actually let me let me come down here and do it the iron and actually let me actually do it over here so i have room the the iron that's in the iron sulfur center is is going to start off is going to start off in the oxidized form which is fe3 plus right it's going to start off as fe3 plus but when you have the electron donor so i'll put ed for electron donor and actually let me show that it's reduced, electron donor reduced, and of course it could be either flavin mononucleotide or another iron sulfur center. It's going to transfer its electrons to the iron, right? So you're going to get an electron donor oxidized, and so what you're going to end up with is instead of Fe3+, plus, you're going to end up with an Fe2+, plus because the, ele the electrons are going to pass one at a time to these, um, they're going to pass one at a time to these iron sulfur centers, and they're specifically passing to the iron. And so, what we can say here is that what we're actually transporting is an electron, is an electron. So the electro, the reduced electron donor is transporting the electron to the iron itself, and it reduces it by one charge, by one oxidation state. And the electrons are going to pass one at a time through these, uh, these iron sulfur centers, right? And I drew two here, but just note there are usually many of them. There's usually many of them. Now what I want to do now is I want to draw the next, the next step. And the next step is a very important one. And by the way, remember there are lots of iron sulfur centers. There's a lot of them. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to have a molecule called ubiquinone. And actually, let me draw it like this. Let me draw it like this. We're going to have ubiquinone. And ubiquinone is going to pick up the electrons from the terminal iron sulfur center. And it's in, also it's going to pick up two protons at the same time. And it's going to, ubiquinone is going to be reduced to ubiquinol. Ubiquinone is going to be reduced to ubiquinol. And this ubiquinol that we produce is the ultimate goal, is the ultimate goal of these enzymes in the respiratory chain. And the other enzymes that do this are succinate dehydrogenase. And there's another one that's actually usually not talked about, but we'll talk about it anyway, is called electron transferring flavoprotein ubiquinone oxidoreductase. But these three enzymes produce ubiquinol. And to understand this, we need to look at the structure of ubiquinone first. And the structure of ubiquinone looks like this. So you're going to have this, this basically, this ring like this. And here is ubiquinone. And you have these ether bonds right here. You have a methyl group here. And you have this isoprene unit right here. You have this isoprene unit and the isoprene units are essentially five carbon units so we count the carbons we have one two three four and five and the way we usually and, and again the way we usually designate them is we put it like this so n because actually with ubiquinones or actually, you may actually hear this referred to as this, coenzyme Q. Coenzyme Q is also ubiquinone, or the reduced form is ubiquinol. But the thing about coenzyme Qs is, is they have um, varying numbers of isoprene units. And one day we'll look at the biosynthesis of ubiquinone. But what you'd find is that there's an enzyme that transfers these isoprene units. And it can transfer multiple sizes of isoprene units. So you can have five, you can have six, you can have nine, you can have ten, you can have twelve. I mean, it, it, it's just it's it, there, it's probably not random, but you know there, it, you can transfer multiple sizes of isoprene units. So we don't know how many there are, so we usually just designate them as an N because. Um, it's a class of molecules. You can't just say there's, oh, there's 10. But in fact, sometimes you'll see in drugstores, there'll be a, a, co a CoQ10. 
And the 10 designates that this n is a 10. So there's 10 isoprene units. And what you notice about this molecule is it's very hydrophobic. Because if you if you were to if you were to extend this chain out and actually draw it, you'd see that it's just a massive carbon chain. So this molecule is very hydrophobic, and once it picks up the electron, and actually we'll get back to that in a minute, but once it picks up the electrons, once it picks up the electrons, it's going to be reduced to something that looks like this. It's going to be reduced to something. Oops, let me. Oh yeah, that was right. That was right. It's going to be reduced to something that looks like this. So it still has that methyl group. And again, we're just doesn't the end this as an N. So this right here is the reduced form. This over here is the oxidized form. And so ultimately, through the iron sulfur center, this gets reduced to this. And that's the ultimate goal of NADHD dehydrogenase, much like the other proteins. So let's regroup and talk about what happened. So NADH is going to come in and it's going to donate its electrons to flavin mononucleotide. And the flavin mononucleotide prosthetic group is going to donate its electrons to a series of iron sulfur centers. And essentially, the, the, the electrons are going to bounce from iron sulfur center to iron sulfur center to iron sulfur center. And as it happens, right, and we, we, we looked at this, right, the, the iron uh, sort of jumps between iron 3 plus and iron 2 plus. And in fact, once the iron 2 plus don't, uh, donates its electron, it'll be shuttled back to iron 3 plus, right? Okay. And then once the, iron sul the terminal iron sulfur center donates its electrons, it donates it to ubiquinone. And we typically abbreviate that as Q because it's for CoQ or coenzyme Q. And that reduces ubiquinone to ubiquinol. QH2, and that in the process, of course, it picks up two protons, but we usually don't um, usually, we don't have to put the two protons, but um, it does pick up two protons, and it reduces it to ubiquinol. And as we'll find, ubiquinol goes to another enzyme, and that enzyme is cytochrome C ubiquinol oxidoreductase, which happens to be complex three. And, um, and the ultimate goal of this enzyme, like I mentioned, is to increase the ubiquinol pool. Is to increase the ubiquinol pool. Okay. And one thing I might also mention, because sometimes they, they put this in textbooks, they'll call this enzyme, they'll give this enzyme a sort of a generic name, and it's complex one, or sometimes they'll put it in Roman numerals, complex one. And there's a complex 2, and that's succinate dehydrogenase, and we'll look at that in the next video. But just realize that it's not that complex 1 and 2 are happening at, you know, it's not, it's not like complex 1 happens before complex 2. I think that's a common mistake. Complex 1 is happening at the same time that complex 2 is happening, which is happening at the same time that electron transferring flavoprotein ubiquinone oxidoreductase is happening. So all three of those enzymes are all happening at the same time, and their ultimate goal, that I want to be perfectly clear, is they're increasing the ubiquinol pool. They're increasing this guy right here. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to look at the the production of ubiquinol ultimately by instead succinate dehydrogenase. And what we'll find is that um, that is actually a TCA cycle enzyme. So see you in the next video.